This is an 8 inch rear drum from an Escort. Uh, I'm told the Temple drums are this style too. I'm not sure if, if they have the 7 inch drums or if they all have the 8 inch drums or if they have larger drums. I don't know. Uh, if, if I find out, I'll put that info down in the description. Uh, but today we're only talking about the 8-inch drum as found on some Escorts, like the GTs, um, and every EXP. So, obviously this is my 82 EXP convertible, and this is the 8-inch rear drum. This is the stock drum. How do you tell apart this drum from the 7-inch one? Well, the biggest difference is the 8-inch one uh, has... It, has a removable drum. The, the drum actually comes off the four log hub. I have this sitting gently on here so I can take it off for you. Um, and so pay no attention to the misalignment here. I only have it on loose simply for photo sake. Now I remove it here. I'll set it off to the side. And as you can see, the drum comes apart in two pieces. The drum itself and the hub. Now uh, I did measure the drum. You can figure out which drum you have uh, because when the drum is rusted onto the hub it can be really difficult to discern the 7 inch from the 8 inch. But you can measure from uh, the outside lip of the drum and it will come in at about 9 and a quarter inches. And if when you get the drum off inside to inside it will be exactly 8 inches as long as it's not worn out. If it's somehow worn past this edge, it'll be much greater than 8 inches, but it should only be about 8 inches. Yeah, it won't be any less than that. But once you remove all that, this is what's left on it. Now there are a few steps getting to, to this point. To get the drum off, I actually prefer going about it uh, a more interesting way. I like taking the drum and and hub off together as one piece. It's actually easier to do that way. Uh, but first what you have to do is you have to work off this dust boot. It'll, it'll be on, on the hub. You simply uh, poke a screwdriver into the side of it in there, poke it in there. You don't want to be denting this, otherwise it won't seal up right or go back in very easily, or come back out. But you want to stick a screwdriver in there to pop this out. So once you get the tip of a spade in there, you know, up against that, that lip, you want to twist it, and then just work your way around, around that cap, and it will pop off with ease. Once you get in there, you will see this arrangement of parts underneath it. You will see this uh, this cotter pin that goes through through the spindle itself. See a cotter pin there. So you got to pinch the ends together, slide it out, and then underneath that will be this castle cap that goes over the nut. So of course, hiding behind that is your nut. And once you take this nut off, uh, it's 24 millimeter. Once you take that nut off. You, Behind it will be this washer, and this is a special washer. You'll notice it has a tang on the inside. That tang goes down this keyway here, so once you put this in, it doesn't spin freewheel or anything like that. And you know it's special because it says it has that Ford blue oval on the bottom that my camera is barely picking up, but there it is for you. Once you have that out, the next piece to come out will be the outer bearing. Now the outer bearing just sits on the end of the shaft here. It's a, uh, eh, there's a step under snug, uh, so a little bit more loose than snug, but it does fit in there well, uh, and it should come off with ease. This will come off with the hub, because this is a male end going into a female hub. So once you, once you have this washer out, uh, this whole hub is coming out. Sometimes you can get the hub out with that washer, but you want to try to get the washer out first because it can catch on some of those threads there and either bugger them up or get jammed in there. So you want to try to get that 
special washer out first. Um, sorry, we'll, we'll try to keep these in order of which they came out. If you can keep track of that progression. And once this is out, your hub should be out. Now once your hub is out, uh, well I, I should mention getting this out can be quite the task. Because uh, if you imagine that's on there and then you have the drum attached to the hub or rusted shut to the hub, it will be very hard to separate the two. That's why we try to pull them both out together. But the biggest thing is, you know, depending on what state your brakes are in and where your adjuster is at, these, these shoes could be spread out pretty far. So getting the drum off can be extremely difficult. I find the best way to do it is try to get it spinning by hand first if you can. If you must, you know, grab a hammer and just whack around the rim a whole bunch. Uh, sometimes you have to heat, heat up the, the pad area with, with a torch. Because well, the, the shoes will only ever be on the left and right side. Now we're on the top, now we're on the bottom. So try to warm these up with a torch while banging them with a hammer should come out. Uh, whether you want to do that before or after you get that outer bearing out, that's up to you. Uh, sometimes it's it's good to do one, then try it without the bearing. You know, sometimes you can make more ground that way, but use your own discretion. But once you have the drum kind of loose and you can move it just a little bit, where you want to pry, you want to go behind the drum right up in here and try working it out. Because like I said, there's no shoe here. Because if you try going over here, you'll get your screwdriver or pry bar caught underneath the shoe. And you can either damage the screw, the shoe, pop the, uh, pop the ceramic shoe off of the, you know, the rest of the, the shoe bracket. You can actually break this little rod, you can break that retaining spring, you can break the retaining cup, you can spin the two out, and the, then the shoe actually comes flying out and, well, with you, with the drum, and then that screws up all this linkage here. Not permanently, but it makes it hard to get the drum off. Now, one other option you do have is if you're really struggling to, to pry the drum out from the top or the bottom, because the bottom is the other good part, to pry up on, just stick it in there just behind the drum, not too far, or you'll bind, uh, but a bunch, pull it out. If you're struggling, one thing you can do is come back to around here. You can see that's uh, about 11.30, you know, just shy of 12 o'clock, and you can actually pry the top of that shoe out. And once you do that, that shoe will come off of that piston. As if that piston is out all the way, and you pull the shoe off it. The, as long as the tensioner isn't out all the way, the, the shoe will actually slide off this piston and shoot back inwards. And you can do the same over here. It's around the, the 1 o'clock, you know, one thirty position. Just pry that out. Shoe again will come out towards you. And then once it's off that piston, it will shoot inwards. And then you'll be able to get the drum out if you haven't already. Now, nothing I said is really foolproof. That's just a really clear way of doing it. Um, you know, the, you can still have the drum rusted onto these shoes really bad, especially if this uh, ceramic pad is just gone and then it's metal on metal. If it's rusted on there real good, it will come out pretty hard. Um, but I've, I made this video for you. And the, the reason... The, well... One of the reasons is people are always asking, well, what's the best way to get the darn drum off? It's stuck on there real good. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but a another thing is once you've managed to work the drum off, sometimes these retaining pins are, you know, will come loose and the, drum, uh, the shoes pop out. Or like I said, you have to move the shoes off of these two pistons and then both shoes come out and in and then they fall on the ground when your drum comes out. And you don't really know where the springs were or how any of this was lined up before you started. So here is how this side is set up. Now this is the left side and the right side is identical. It's just a mirrored image. So everything you see here, if you can imagine uh, making a mirror image of this, the thick end of the springs would all be on the right, and the adjuster would actually be 
on the left because everything on the right is vice versa of the left. Now the, the springs are the same between the sides, the shoes are the same, these retaining pins, the adjuster, um, <clears throat> sorry, the, <laughs> the, the brake cylinder, all that is the same from left to right, the only difference being this brake line, soft line is the same. Um, and then when you put everything together, how you orient it is special. Uh, I do want to say, because I almost forgot, that the, the, the rearmost shoe will have the parking brake cable arm on it. So, you know, your, uh, this rear, rearmost shoe will not be interchangeable uh, from either side, but the, the leading shoe is. You just can't mix up the two places. And they do orient specifically. These shoes do have a notch right here for the self-adjuster. Now, unlike older uh, Ford drum brakes or most other drum brakes, there is no access panel on the back of this steel plate. On the back of this steel plate, there is absolutely nothing except the, the master cylinder, sorry, <laughs> the brake calipers, um, or I should say slave cylinder, uh, bleeder uh, screw. That's that's all there is back here. There's no rubber caps or anything for you to access and loosen up the adjuster. There's nothing. If you want to do anything with these brakes, you either crack that bleeder and hope fluid comes out, or you pop that drum off. That's your only two options. Now, depending on the condition of your backing plate, you can get pretty aggressive when you're trying to pop the, the drum off. Um, but you know, when these get really rusty, this one's actually really nice, uh, despite how brown it is, but when they're really rusty, this will bend a lot. So that's another reason why you want to stick to the two bending points at uh, 12 o'clock and six o'clock because on the sides it's, it's, it's a little bit more flimsy. If yours is thinner, you know, it'll, it'll bend a lot. So try to restrict how much it bends. When it's really thick like this, it's pretty lenient, but you can still do some damage, especially on the sides. Now, uh, I almost forgot, once you have the, the outer bearing out, and then you have the hub off, you now have to get the, uh, the, un the inner bearing out. So this is what it is. It's, it's, it's another cage needle bearing, just like the outer one, but significantly larger and it actually rests on that step back there. Now, a lot of times these have rusted onto the shaft. You know, if that rearmost seal failed, these will rust onto the shaft really hard and they'll be a pain to get out. Uh, best procedure is take a torch over to this. This is all metal. There's no plastic or rubber inside of this that you would damage. Um, so you can just get this thing warm or hot, whatever it takes, and slowly work it out. Um, sometimes they get hung up towards the edge here. That's how this one was because nothing really sits here on this end. Um, so over time this can rust up where spots of it will like mine has. Uh, and then a good way to get it off is take like some needle nose or pliers, sneak behind the bearing and just pop it out with that. Sometimes you do need to get a, a, a three finger puller and work it out. Just use something sacrificial on the end here so you're not mushrooming that spindle end. And then once that last bearing is out, you'll be able to get the seal out. Now normally, when your, your shaft isn't rusted and your, your rear, your inner bearing isn't rusted to the shaft, your, your bearing will actually come out with this seal because the seal is pressed into the hub like this and then the bearing sits in this race underneath it. So it normally be oriented like this and the seal would pull this out with it. So when you're doing this whole procedure, you want to make sure you're not forgetting that rear, that innermost seal or any of these bearings <laughs> or you'll be in a world of hurt. Now, the one thing I haven't talked about yet is separating the, the hub from the drum. That's the last thing I'm going to talk about here. There are a few tricks to it. Like I said, you can get it really hot, beat it with a hammer a lot. Or something that's really effective. Um, of course, when you're ready to put all this back together, never sees all over, man. On both sides of the drum, you want it everywhere. 
so that this will not rot or rest onto it. But when you're trying to separate them and you have one piece like this, see how the belt lug nuts stick down in the center of the hub? If you can lay that flat on something and you can actually, you know, just bang it against the floor some, sometimes that drum will actually just fall off my hub. That's how it did with this car because it's not too rusty. Otherwise, what you'll have to do is while the two are together, you set it up like that, and then you put it under a press. You set, you, you cover up this with a thick chunk of steel, and then you press that center out. And as long as you support the drum very well, you'll force that hub out of this drum. Now you can still buy these drums. You can still buy everything here, but you can't buy the backing plate. You can't buy the spindle. And I don't know if anyone still sells the hub. But you used to be able to buy the hub, so if you damaged that, that wasn't too big of a concern. But I'll do some research and I'll look it up for you guys, because you know, that's, that's something you'll want to know if you're short it. Now, that kind of concludes everything we're talking about. I will have a video on uh, disassembling the 7 inch drum. So I will get there at some point. Um, but before I let you go, remember that when you're assembling this and disassembling it, take plenty of photos like this, uh, you know, no matter which drum you have. And when you go to put everything back together, never seize. Like I almost filled up this cavity full of never seize, so this self adjuster, it does freely move in and out like it's supposed to. Um, it's just my adjusting lever hasn't been contacting it like it should, but I'll stop there.